Welcome to the Deadwood. I'm Willow the Wendigo. I make my home here. This is part two of my talk with Emma Thorne, where we discussed Mud Fossil University's video about Stonehenge. It was... interesting, to say the least. We each wanted to do a more light-hearted project, given we've done some heavier content recently, and this gave us quite a few laughs. But I do have to apologize for my lower audio quality. I think it suffered by being recorded through Discord, even though I was using my good mic. I'd like to give a big thank you to Emma for letting me collab with her. I really appreciated working with my friend, and I've linked her part one and her fabulous channel in the description below. Give them a look as well, and enjoy the shenanigans! An area right at the very out top. You can't get any blood out of it, and I'll show you why. So what I did was I broke a piece off here, which I showed you. Here's one of the, one of the bits of it right here, and uh, it's it's it just popped right off like a like it, like it was velcroed there. And I'll show you why that happens too. Nothing here is a mystery anymore. It just is a mystery why nobody cares about it. And the, and the. Is it really, though? <laughs> it's a mystery why nobody watches my 30-minute videos where I point at rocks. <laughs> Make shit up. Why does nobody care about this? <laughs> why don't they care, Willow? Why don't they care? The fingerprints start right here, just like they will on your finger, right next to your finger now. And, and when it popped off, it popped right off of here. That was the spot it popped right off of, that little curve right there. At this point, even when he says stuff like that, I just want to go press X to doubt. <laughs> yeah. Even the little things. The I, problem is, I just... he opened early doors with, we've DNA tested this rock. And so it makes everything he says now sound suspicious. Well, the problem is he opened the first door with holding a rock and saying, this is a goose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was where the trouble started. <laughs> uh, and there's more to it came down here. And anyway, then I could get down into the blood. That's where I got the very good, dense, excellent quality DNA and had it tested. Dense DNA. We love dense DNA. Oh, dense DNA. That's mm. the really good stuff. Oh. Yeah. Is that DNA that... <laughs> you have to really wade mean. through it. It's like molasses. You can't even hardly move. It's so dense. I was gonna say, is it just like Roger's genetic history, like the dense DNA? <laughs> <laughs> but that wouldn't be very nice, so I'm not gonna say that. And this is almost three feet long, tip to tip. There it is right here. That's the fingerprint that I do knocked off. Now we've got Rogerception here. We've got a picture of Roger holding something. Yeah, until I realized hand. that was a picture, I was very confused about how many hands Roger has. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like multiple Rogers in the same <laughs> picture. It's really messing with my brain, especially because the hands match up. It's a right hand and a left hand. Yeah. The are wrong. <laughs> And these are the actual fingerprint ridges, the same as here. And these are the sweat pores. Now, you see this here? This is really like, it's just, it's just like that. It's just dense. And it popped right off just like this, right at that layer. It also feels like he's supernaturally good at holding something still. Yeah, yeah. But he can move the other hand and just display things. And it just makes me feel really uncomfortable. It's like um, it's like you're playing a game in VR, but you've only got one hand controller connected. So yeah. one's like perfectly still, and the other one's like. <laughs> it's really, it's uncanny. It's, it's weird. It's yeah. But the goose is still there. We still got the goose, thank God. Nayada, there's some re nice red blood, and I I was very careful the way I did it, and it was dense, and it was excellent quality, and it was tested from internal DNA, MT DNA. I'll show you the report. 
and uh, I believe that's the first time in the world ever it was done on an ancient creature. And this was in 2015. Now, it's certainly the first in the world ever on a giant human being making it. And it was, it came out human, no, no question. So where's the, where's the proof of this? Yeah. Show your workings, please, Roger. You'd be one of the most famous people in the world if you found the first DNA evidence of a giant human, Roger. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you got it from a rock. <laughs> I like, if, you know, if this, if this was a real thing and, you know, even if somebody else had done the DNA testing, because presumably Roger's not qualified in that area, somebody would have leaked this, right? I feel like we would have heard about it. Also, it makes me just strangely happy that if you read down the right side of the screen there, you have keratinized cells, sweat duct gland, ridge ending, dot. <laughs> okay, this is the palm of the hand that I showed you the fingertips and the bone balls and all the apical tuft, all that stuff from all that Press eroded stuff. Right. Now, this is a left hand. Okay, <laughs> sure. This Whatever is you say, the Roger. bumper pad that runs right down here. There's a tendon that runs right here. I'm going to go home in a second. We'll take a little closer look. Did you just start speaking in tongues for a second there? <laughs> no. Karamo sharadanda rabasha karabamanda ridiasa. That was like a foreign language. I, I, I gotta hear that again. I'm gonna go home in a second. We'll take a little closer look. Yes, Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Uh, uh, Reminded me of my uh, younger church days there. <laughs> this is the cleave in between the pinch of your hand right there. This is where your thumb runs off this way. Now, I have a bunch of the, as I showed you, I have a bunch of parts from that. And, and I have other stuff from this. I'm sure it's from the same guy. Now, if Roger's sure, I'm sure. Yeah. How do you feel about this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, now we know it was a guy as well. It's amazing. He's, he's an incredible researcher. It's amazing that he's not getting like book deals and TV shows left, right and center. I wonder what Roger could tell about my life just by looking at me. If he can tell this from rocks, he'd have sorry, to chip oh. off. He'd have to chip off the tip of your finger to know anything. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's a price I don't want to pay. Yeah. Well, well, maybe for Roger's insight. This is the grip skin on this. Remember, this is the grip skin on a gigantic one. This thick. This is like, oh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch thick or something. But it's the same stuff. It's a grip skin. This is the grip skin on one of these. Thump thump. And that's why it turns silver, and underneath it's red, because the red is the bloody, fleshy stuff. And the grip skin is coming off. And it's all over the place. Isn't it all bloody, now, fleshy? This right it's not here that different, is it? There's nothing more than this bumper. I feel pad. like it's sort of not too dissimilar amounts of bloody, fleshy across the hand. I don't feel like it's all the blood flesh is here. Or here? Which bits the flesh? I can't even tell. See, Roger can, and that's what matters. Roger yeah, you're right. Roger that's why we trust Roger. Now, this right here is nothing more than this bumper pad that runs down on your hand. It's exactly the same. B very scientific. The bumper pad. The bumper pad. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what you use to when you're playing the pinball machine. That's what you use to hit the bumper button. No question. This is a... And it's been... Well, I, I had a fingertip was the one I had DNA tested off of this. And... Um, that's the cleave in between there. And so it's available to be looked at. And uh, so this was a smaller of my two giants, but it's still like a four foot wide hand. That's pretty good size. It, I wouldn't want to run into that guy if he was in a bad mood. Okay, my friends, I'm really Stonehenge. sorry. Stonehenge! I missed this, but... Yes! Oh my god! Stonehenge! 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 What is the happiest moment of a person's life? The day that Roger finally talks about fucking Stonehenge in his goddamn Stonehenge video. Also, dear God, what is up with that number of tabs? Oh, wow. And he's not got any bookmarks. So I guess he doesn't know that that's a thing. 
That should be like a crime. Well, I was just looking to see if there's a specific site that's very popular among certain people. It's a it's a P, a black P on a yellow background. Don't ask me why I know. Yeah, I, I think I've heard of that. No, I don't see it. Okay. That would be slightly too normal, I feel like, for... I feel like yeah, I, I, Roger I mean, seeks other means. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame Roger. I mean, I know yeah. what the site looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Roger's on rule 34 looking at giantesses, you know? <laughs> that's, that's more his style. I had a whole thing about it at the British Museum from February to July 2022. I just got this, and it is now September. Now, um, what I would like to do is to have my English friends, and I, I, I want to extend, extend my sympathies for your fabulous queen who was, who will be remembered for being fabulous. I won't say anything unless you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut on this one. <laughs> oh, sympathies from Roger. However, Stonehenge we need to look at in a whole different light, just as they're saying, the new scientific discoveries reinterpreting Stonehenge. I don't think they're reinterpreting the way I am. Let's take a look at it. No! Probably not, Roger. Oh my god! Do you think I Roger and the British it. Museum are interpreting this new information differently? No fucking way. I mean, it's, it's entirely possible Roger sees things differently than the they. I mean, I would, I would assume that the British Museum is part of the they. Of course. Now this is by the British Museum events. Let's take a see what they have to say. Okay, my friends, this is the British Museum events. Okay. And they yes, say we, we're we bringing inspiring stories of humanity's shared histories and cultural achievements to millions of people online. So, and they're looking for your support. And, you know, if it's good information and they're taking it from all sides, here's the problem. I can't get anybody to engage with me. Now, here's what they have to say. Here's what he's saying. To our British Academy, British Museum events, uh, new scientific discoveries reinterpreting Stonehenge. Former principal archaeologist at the Research Centre for the National Museum of, of Scotland. And now we have Roger Spur, <laughs> who is an uninvited guest who will be speaking to the evidence they present. And now we have Willow the Wendigo turning into a black hole of cringe <laughs> imploding on herself. I can't believe they didn't invite Roger <laughs> alongside all of these storied archaeologists, these uh, renowned professors, heritage experts. I can't believe it. They didn't invite THE Roger from Mud Fossil University? Why He's got his they? own university. Come on, guys. I mean, you can see it at the bottom of the screen. Okay, they're going to have a big meeting about how everything's changed now. And they're talking about dates and so forth. And that's fine. I, I'd love to be part of the uh, discussion because I don't think they're going to be talking about these are body parts, which they are. All right, let me just No, I don't think they are going to be talking talk about, about that, you. Roger, for some reason. Let me just explain to you. What they're going to talk about is how they discovered where these blue stones came from that created Stonehenge. And then they're going to sort of probably talk about what it might mean to the religious and so forth. However, this is these different quarries. And they say, did most or all the blue stones go straight from these quarries to Stonehenge? Or is there yet another yet undiscovered dismantled blue stone circle nearer the quarries? These are body parts. Nice argument, Roger. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up. I don't know what kind of creature it's from, but they, they, they just died with the creature there and turned into stone. And they're just laying flat on the landscape. That's what happened everywhere. So Roger doesn't understand that a quarry is not a dead body? Uh, so what so how, so what Stonehenge then? Did part of the body get up and walk away from the quarry? How did what It looked earlier like he was gonna say they were feet. Yeah. But then this isn't Stonehenge. 
this is a quarry. So I'm very confused now. But then uh, as soon as any experts start talking about where the stone from Stonehenge came from, Roger has a problem because it's not stone, it's the foot of a giant or something. And, and I guess if that's the case, did they only use feet? <laughs> they didn't use any other parts? Why wouldn't they just use the body? Did they just find a body and then they decided only... No, they must have found multiple bodies. They must have found... How many stones are there in Stonehenge? Unless each stone is a toe. And, well, it, looked, uh, it looked like he had a picture of a foot, though. Yeah, I don't know anymore. I didn't know to begin with. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just don't bloody know. Cause there, I think there are... I mean, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head, because I've only visited it once. Aren't there something like 18 stones? 20 stones? I may be way off. Roughly 100. So, yeah, if, if you're dealing with feet, then you've got 50-something giants there. Yeah, just feet. And they only use the feet. That's really weird. So maybe they use other body parts. Then why aren't there any skulls or finger bones or whatever? Wouldn't it make a cooler like religious effigy if it was just a giant fucking skull? And then well, like a the hand thing. coming out of the ground? Yeah, or why, did, why didn't they just, in that case, make a shrine at the skeleton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would they mine the bones just to take them somewhere else to build a structure? That I doesn't mean, make for, any sense. For fuck's sake, if I were those people, I would probably make a shrine in the skeleton. Yeah. And that would probably be an effigy of my god or goddess. And if you if you are, like, you know, uh, an ancient person with a superstitious mindset, I feel like you probably wouldn't think, let's take some of this giant creature's bones and move them. You would, like, surely that would be some kind of sacred place or feared or something. I feel like there would be superstitious reasons not to move the bones of a giant creature. <laughs> Instead, the logic is apparently, let's steal their feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's worship their feet for our feet religion. Mm. Okay, Roger, whatever okay. you say. <laughs> All right, Hesiod says that everything is made out of bodies of creatures. Oh, that's right. He goes into poems it, now. The earth and the universe. That was First all the stone he should get. This goes Who's back this to 7, author? 800 BC. Is a written source Kessian. explaining the connections between the gods, goddesses, and immortal beings are the embodiment, respective parts of the earth and the universe. They're, they're, they're the bodies of creatures. Hesiod explains that in the beginning there was only chaos, and then came Gaia, the broad earth who supports Mount Olympus at its core, then was Tartarus. From Gaia came Uranus, the sky and stars, and together they bore the Titans and Titanesses and the monsters. All of these things I have found to be fairly accurate. He starts it right out by saying, In nova fert animus mutatus desir formas copra. What does that mean? I think he actually I said that right. I to speak of thing. forms changed into new entities accompanying this theme is often violence afflicted on upon a victim whose transformation becomes part of the natural landscape which i have been showing over and over whenever i i hear something like this you know like uh, people looking at ancient greek poetry or whatever and being like this is clearly a document of reality or, you know, mythology or whatever. I imagine a distant future where somebody fucking digs up Lord of the Rings or something and it's like, I knew it. Elves are real, uh, you know, and, and they take like the mythology of Tolkien's universe as how the world was created. It's like, ah, oh, the angels came and built the world or whatever. And it's like, just because a Greek poet wrote it, they would probably be like, no, bro, it was, it was fiction. It was, it was fictitious. I was like crafting a story <laughs> like, or they dig up one of my college notebooks and think they found a new source of hieroglyphics <laughs> i've always so figured that would happen my my chicken scratch was terrible people <laughs> would be like oh yeah there was a there was a a hidden language of hieroglyphics in, in north america <laughs> like, no just terrible chicken scratch oh. Relax. time makes people look at things differently bc now he's reinterpreting it and compiling it into a big group of books as you can see they take us right from the creation book one ages of mankind that's the one that was written by hesiod but then there was the flood deucalion that's noah and pyra apollo daphne all of the different 
different gods and goddesses. And what did they do? And what, how? And then Noah's a god now. So, so, so is he saying that the similarities between those? I mean, if we're talking about Hesiod, then ancient Greek like mythology is. So, so does he still does he think that Noah is real, or does he accept that there there were there were earlier stories of 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 different gods and and people who I, I'm just confused. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. What, I don't understand what Roger believes anymore. I think what he's getting at is these books confirm his mud fossil stuff. Yeah. Because they, the authors say they had knowledge of the universe from godlike creatures who say that the universe is constantly changing and beings are intricately connected and they're fossilizing. I think that's how bad his argument is. But then surely, surely Roger would be like a, like a, what's the word? Uh, a, a pantheist? I don't know, because I'm pretty sure he's a young earth creationist who yeah. at least believes in the flood. I thought he was Christian. Um, and he, he name drops Noah there. He takes the yeah. flood from Greek myths and turns it into Christian Noah flood. Because he takes, who is it, Deucalion? I've never heard of that. And it's just, he just changes that to Noah. So apparently the Bible takes precedence. Um, How bizarre. But yeah, all, so of this is, all of this is very nonsensical. Yes. I don't even know what to say. So he's basically taking this uh, ancient work, ancient poetry, and saying that the bit about people becoming part of the landscape is true, but they've gotten the, the gods responsible wrong. I guess... But it's like that first Not line. Clear. <laughs> I intend to speak of forms changed into new entities. So he's taking that line and saying, therefore, mud fossils. Yeah. But not the rest of not the Accompanying rest of Accompanying this theme is often violence inflicted upon a victim whose transformation becomes part of the natural landscape. Yeah, I, I don't really know what to say about this. <laughs> yeah. It's so <laughs> just dumb. Yeah. Of, you know, you're talking about Mars and Venus and... <laughs> There's a lot to look at here now with this new evidence that I'm presenting. He thinks it's evidence. I know I guess. it sounds just literally what insane. Evidence? Show me the evidence. Show me the evidence. What have I missed? But if you don't start to think about what they wrote in the ancient past. <laughs> Something Sazzy and I were talking about, which was interesting, is it's super frustrating that these people don't treat their information like this like they're actually trying to convince people they blurt out all of this stuff almost as if it's self-evident yes and just by them divulging it to you you should believe because it's correct and that's not how it works. Unless you walk outside and I can show you to your face that the sky is blue mm. and you can look at it, then you won't believe me. But sometimes the sky is even gray, so you may not believe me. I mean, even in the reverse case, like my brother does not believe that I am a trans woman. I have told him, I had to cut off contact with him because I told him I'm a trans woman. I'm a trans person, I've changed my name, I need you to use a different name for me. My state recognizes my name has changed, the, gov the federal government recognizes my name has changed, the social security office, the my driver's license, everything. Like, my name has changed. Mm -hmm. The world we live in recognizes this. I have changed it. It has been this way for multiple years. Use a different name for me. And my brother's like, no, you think you've changed your name, but you haven't. Okay, I am not a medical doctor, but in my opinion, that is delusion. Yeah. He will not accept that reality has altered despite mountains of evidence to the contrary. Mm -hmm. And these people kind of do a similar thing where they're like, okay, well, this is my argument or this is my worldview, but I'm not going to present it that way. I'm just going to tell you what it is and you should change your mind. Yeah. That's, not how, you, that's not how you convince people. So if you just tell me, okay, well... This is what 
Ovid says, and therefore I'm correct. No, you actually have to, like, present something. If I tell you, well, creatures evolve into other creatures, that's mm -hmm. what happens. You're not going to believe me if you don't already accept that that happens. Yeah. It's super frustrating to encounter whether it's people like Roger who's trying to convince you that mud fossil thing, I don't know what you call it, mud fossilism, mud <laughs> fossilization, like yeah. I don't know. It's super frustrating to encounter people like that or apologists or UFO people or flat earthers or whatever mm -hmm. who do this, but they don't actually argue for what they want. And I'm sure yes. if people from those communities see this, some of them will be like, well, I do, I argue or whatever. Okay, granted, maybe you do. But the vast majority of what I see is just blurting what they believe. Yeah. And then saying, you should believe me. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's really, it, it's kind of sad, but it's mostly frustrating and annoying. Mm. It's, it's kind of, I find it sort of, Dishon like intellectually dishonest and that is like that's been this entire video is like I mean the evidence is all there you can see it just people aren't interested in it you know and I've got all of these things and we've done these te and you know it's 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 just him basically saying it's obvious the entire time and like not to name drop one of our least favorite people old Matt Powell <laughs> And uh, and his problem, God, I can't remember when this was, but I think uh, I think I think actually this might have been Hovind and Powell. Some problem they had with me was not being not being like certain of everything, of being like you know it's, it's saying that something is a possibility or just you know not being absolutely certain of everything you say. And uh, but w but when you say everything as if it's obvious fact, when it's not only contradictory to reality. But like, yeah, you're not giving any information. You're not giving any any evidence. It's like, you you believe it or you don't as a viewer. So you're reinforcing bias in the people that already believe it, and the people that don't believe it think, what a fucking idiot. And that's what have you achieved? It's definitely a common religious thing. It seems to be like, well, the evidence is there. You've already seen it. You should believe or yeah. you should accept. Well, that's what happens it, when you grow up in a religion that promotes blind faith over original thinking, right? Yeah. That's, that's just like the type of thinking that is normal. Or, or they, they do that or they they retroactively do things. Mm. Or, I'm sorry, they, they retroactively justify things. Yeah. You um, start with the belief and then fit the evidence around it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and the other thing is when they do try to argue, it's virtually always logical fallacies um, with the uh, or my or um, or their arguments are just mental exercises. It's like, OK, well, why why should I accept what you have to say? Well, uh, here's here's mental gymnastics or here's my here's my argument that involves this but this but this okay well where's your actual evidence well well if this happens and then this happens what that's why you have to believe no where's your actual evidence look at the trees bro <laughs> look I, at the I, had a com I had a commenter literally tell me that <laughs> me too me too so i like literally i got like ago. a 10 paragraph comment uh, like the other day that basically the whole thing was look at the trees yeah the guy, the guy told me uh look outside examine the trees around you or something like that yeah um and, and that's just that's not evidence no, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> no not, not. Pro prove to me that your god made the trees and then maybe i'll be interested in examining them yeah. But that's not evidence. And it, it just goes back to this, okay, here's my stuff. You already have it. Believe me. Yeah, and exactly. It, 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 you, like you pointed out, that's all this video has been. It's just take my word for it. It's trust so, me, bro. Okay. Yeah, it's for 20 minutes. It, it's so frustrating.